I'll just share very briefly. So I kind of hinted at this one. We have this interesting problem at work. I'm sure other people have come across this before. Uh, we roll out a deployment and sometimes we have to do some, something after the deployment has completed successfully. So I deployed my web service. I want to run migrations for the database that that service owns. We just want to do it automatically. It's a common pattern. How do we solve that problem in the Kubernetes world? Um, if you go look around, you'll find there's lots of really interesting annotations and triggers and things to say like, oh, when I detect a change, like I'll see you updated your manifest, um, then I will go kick off a job for you. But we didn't want it to be um, something that happens all the time. We said we want something to happen only if the deployment completes successfully, right? And that's kind of, we were struggling to find something and I thought, hey, maybe this is a good opportunity to play with, with Rust. So we wrote at work this thing called uh, DocBot, which is comes from like the, comes from the, the matrix world. Um, but I wanted to at least just point one little thing that was kind of cool, which is if you've uh, ever implemented any kind of like Kubernetes operator controller uh, in the Go world, there's all this like generated code. You're running these make scripts that are just injecting stuff at build time. And honestly, I'm not really sure like what part of the build cycle code is injected in. It's pretty hard to follow. Um, and just to do one quick kind of back step um, in the Kubernetes world, for those who don't work in there, we have this com com uh, concept of like a controller or an operator which is a really fancy way of saying, uh, I would like to know if something changes. And you can uh, you can say like, oh, I want to know if a deployment changes. Any time, any change to any deployment, just send me a copy of that deployment JSON body, and I will parse it and I will do something with it. Um, and so really, anytime I say controller or operator, what I'm really saying is a convenient way to subscribe to changes within a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and that's what we're seeing here. But to go back to the first point of in the Go world, um, we have all of this like generated code at build time. It gets really hard to follow. There's a crate called kubers, um, and it's really well done. So you have these strongly typed APIs where I say, hey, I want this API client that covers all namespaces in a cluster, and I specifically want um, the client to target the deployment API. And so just by passing these types around or specifying these type parameters, uh, I'm, I'm almost uh, building the correct API client for the kube cluster. And from there, I can go see uh, the latest version of stuff. So I don't really care about old things. I just want to know what's recent as of the app starting. And then I can use the API to say, hey, I want to watch for deployment changes. And then I get this little really uh, this kind of tight loop that just says, hey, um, if this thing was added or if it was modified, let's see if it uh, finished deploying successfully. If it hasn't, then I'll wait for the next message when the deployment has finished rolling out. And then uh, this is like a little check that I say, hey, uh, I want to see if this deployment actually changed in contents and it's not hitting some you know, automatic scale up because we're under load. Because I don't need to run the migrations unless the code actually changes. So it's like a convenient way of catching that. But then finally, I'll say, cool, like create some job. Um, and how this looks, or, or rather how this is defined, is uh, I say, let's uh, create, I think I have like a test here, a deployment hook. Should we be seeing it? Oh, okay, there we go. Your screen is changing. Sorry. Can you see this now? This like deployment hook. Yeah. Sweet. So what this is, what this is, it's a custom type that we made uh, in Rust. Well, the, we define this from this Rust app that just says, hey, like anytime an app called Nginx finishes deploying, uh, run this pod template, and the pod template defines um, 
the pod template defines, you know, the containers, the commands you want to run. This is all like built into the Kube API stuff. So we're not doing anything particularly crazy here. Um, and we also can say like, you know, define the spec inline. And and when you do this, so like if we go into this deployment uh, and change a value uh, and apply it. Uh, I think I need to be in this tab to apply it and apply it. Um, nothing is going to happen because I, I am not running <laughs> a controller. Let me run this really quick and then we'll do a uh, quick experiment again. All right, so I'll change the contents of this, uh, of this uh, deployment. We'll apply it one more time. And over here on the right hand side, we'll see uh, Nginx has been deployed. And then I have actually uh, two deployment hooks, both uh, the examples in this, in this project that are running right now. And if we look on the right hand side, we can see, I'm sorry if it's small, but we can see Nginx has updated. It's running as of 20 seconds ago. And after that completed, we had these two hooks that run. And if we look at their logs, we can see it says doing some work, still doing some work, and done, which is exactly what this pod template defined as a script. Um, so that's like the life cycle of it. Really, really light. Uh, there's not a lot of Rust code here. Um, but I have loved working with that strongly typed API client. It's a breath of fresh air coming from the Go side or the Ruby side trying to write a controller there. And again, a controller just means an API client that can subscribe to changes. Sort of like a worker. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Same thing, right? Um, but uh, super cool, like little tiny problem that we came across. I couldn't find a good solution out there. And so in like, you know, a short period of time, I was able to crank this out. Um, I did want to highlight one really interesting thing of Rust, which is this. Um, one common thing projects use is the build RS, which is built into Cargo. And this is just saying uh, this, this script or this main function here is compiled and run at compile time of the larger project. And um, what I really wanted to do here was say, look, we de define this um, this resource definition or like these types, right? Like I, I said, oh, I want to create this thing called a deployment hook. And I define that in Rust. And then the macros from the kubrs crate will build it out. But one thing that I was having trouble doing was keeping it synchronized, because I didn't want to have to generate this thing or hand tweak this thing. And the thing I'm talking about is specifically um, this massive custom resource definition, which is just YAML hell uh, from. Uh, Whoa, is that, that like? 40 levels of indentation. <laughs> Dude, it's a, yeah, it's a lot. But I'll show you why and why it's really cool, or one thing that's really neat. Um, it's 4,000 lines long almost. It's Yes, but I, it's because I did that to myself because, um, <laughs> one, is I said, like, hey, it'd be cool on a deployment hook if I can just inline a pod spec, right? And like, that'd be fun. And so I let myself do that as, like, hey, why don't I just allow myself to insert a pod template on this definition? Um, but I didn't want to have to manually type in or copy or indent 4,000 lines of YAML. Um, and I didn't have to because with this build RS script, I can literally say, hey, pull that resource definition, all that Rust code that's generated with all those macros, and then call to YAML on it. Calling to YAML on it will create the custom resource definition um, correctly. And then I can put that into the main directory of my repo. So every time I build the project, it's automatically synchronizing the YAML, which I will upload to the cluster, with the custom resource definition that's defined in my project. So if I were to change, if I were to go in here and add a new field called, I don't know, like YOLO. Um, this may fail to compile because I'm not defining the structure or whatever. But if I could run a build on this, build RS will say, great, before I, before I finish anything else, go ahead and update the, uh, oops, not this one, 
apps on uh, Go update this 4,000 line YAML file or regenerate it. And uh, when, then when I go check in my changes, this will automatically be up to date. So the one thing, I've, the, the two things to take away here are, or the three things. One, Rust is really great if you're building in the Kubernetes ecosystem because the second point I wanted to make, the strongly typed API client is incredible and I want to use it all the time. And three, little things that Cargo offers like this build RS uh, make that really complicated Golang flow of make files doing all of these random commands at different stages of the compile time or like when I say compile time with through that whole make file craziness, um, really simple. Uh, I just have this very easy to read build RS script that's run at compile time and I get the same thing, which is an always updated, uh, which would otherwise be tedious uh, at best YAML file um, and never have to worry about it. So it's awesome. Cool. That's so use Rust to write all your horrible YAML files is what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Garrett.